Most people would probably think that the first US-owned government property outside the US borders is in Europe or maybe in Asia. We could not be more wrong. As the longest tenured American-owned property on a foreign territory is in the city of Tangier, Morocco, a melting pot for different cultures and nationalities. The former US consulate is located north of Tangier, in a sprawling compound that straddles both sides of Zankat America in the section of the Old Medina. Welcome to the Tangier American Legation. This is a really unique place. Um, first of all, it is the only American National Historic Landmark located outside of the United States. It's also a Moroccan landmark as well. So just one example of how this place has resonance and importance to both countries and to both cultures. I like to say sometimes that the legation is a love story because it represents um, so many people um, who fell in love with the place, with the idea, with um, the values, with the history. And, and because of that love, they helped to build it. So it was built by the, the sweat, the hard work of many volunteers who in the 1970s fixed it all up. And earlier, um, it was created by a series of consuls who loved their work here, who loved being in Morocco. Um, and this building in particular is um, the product of the passion of, um, of a consul named Blake. He was here for almost 40 years, Maxwell Blake, um, off and on, and he was here during the, the World Wars. Mm. And he loved Morocco, he loved Tangier, um, and he loved the decorative arts. So he would go on vacation sometimes to Europe and he would find things to, to, to decorate and enhance the legation, like the fireplaces inside the rooms and some of the chandeliers. He would buy them and bring them back. And he thought, you know, sometimes there were visitors who would come and see him and they would come only to the legation or they would come only to Tangier. And, and he thought that was a shame because he wanted people to see the diversity of Moroccan artisan work. Um, he wanted them to see the incredible architecture and, and the work um, that, that uh, Morocco is so justifiably famous for. And so he wanted to create a, a vitrine, a show, a showroom, um, so that people who came here would see everything, not just kind of the European style that you see in much of the rest of the legation, but also something that is intrinsically Moroccan. So he um, convinced the State Department to buy an old building that was, you know, sort of next to us, and he undertook the renovation. Um, and when you see this building from the outside, you see it's a beautiful Moroccan style. When you go inside, you'll see gorgeous painted doors, the beautiful painted ceilings, incredible tile work. He brought, um, Consul Blake brought um, Master Mualem from uh, Marrakesh and from Fez to work on them here because he said, you know, people need to see the best. When they come, they need to see the best. And, and I like this story because it tells you a little bit about the spirit of the legation, about how the legation is really uh, a, an American and a Moroccan institution in place because the consul general at the time worked really hard to make sure that people at the American you know, consulate saw the best of Moroccan art because he loved it so and he thought that that was important. Um, so, you know, he wasn't trying to make it look as American as possible. He was trying to make it look like this wonderful mix of Morocco and the United States. Uh, Talim is the name of the association that runs the legation. Um, so the legation is the building. The legation is sort of the historical building. It's been called the legation since 1821. Um, but uh, at one point it was uh, a, a consulate mm -hmm. that was operated by the US government. Mm -hmm. And then it became this museum and this cultural center um, and this research center that's operated by an association called Talim. In the World War II section, we were immersed in history just by viewing the paintings, the collectibles, the Enigma machine, and listening to the popular music of that era. We felt as we were on the battlefield. The American Legation Museum tells the story of culture's confluence and the long-standing shared history of the USA and Morocco during World War II. Thus, the visitors can understand the price of victory and freedom. Welcome to the uh, World War II part of the museum. Here, the first thing that you see in front of you is this standing marine, and the marines have a long history with Morocco. During the U.S. Civil War, the marines came to, to Tangier 
to uh, pick up two uh, Confederate prisoners who were held in the legation and were taken by the Marines, the Union Marines, the U.S. Marines, and uh, so that their, this was their first encounter with Morocco. Then uh, they came back several times, but one of the prominent parts was in 1949 when the U.S. decided that uh, to deploy U.S. Marines to um, to guard its diplomatic sites across the world, and Tangier, the first detachment to be sent. Uh, to, uh, uh, to two posts were, were was sent to both Tangier and Bangkok, uh, the U.S. embassies, uh, the American legation in Tangier and the U.S. embassy in Bangkok. You can see here this flag, which was gifted to the first U.S. ambassador to Morocco by this lady, Ghalia Uzzahra. And here you can see uh, depictions of, of news about these, this landing in, in newspapers across the United States, from the east to the west, uh, in African-American uh, newspapers. So what we are seeing here is a, a recreation of the atmosphere of 1940s, where uh, the legation was a hub, where the United States gathered its own intelligence about North Africa. Uh, it was called Station Midway, where intelligence gathered in, in all over North Africa, from Tunisia, Algeria, Morocco, and different Moroccan cities. Um, it was gathered here, and then it was sent to uh, London and Washington to be analyzed and studied, which was later turned into uh, CIA. In this pavilion, Malcolm Forbes collected more than 115,000 toy soldiers depicting major battles, such as the Battle of Tondibi in 1591 and the Battle of Wadel Makhazin in 1578. This diorama represents the uh, Battle of Songhay, which took place in the Sahara Desert between the Moroccan army and the army of the Songhay Empire. And it took place in 1591. The museum also includes a collection of 20th century art, much of which was painted by Moroccan and European artists in Tangier, as renowned American writers Paul and Jane Bowles. Paul's friend included many famous authors who often visited Tangier during the International Zone period. This is the Paul Bowles wing. It's dedicated to the American composer and translator somehow and uh, novelist and writer uh, Paul Bowles who uh, came to Morocco on a grant from the Rockefeller Foundation to record rare Moroccan music in 1958. And uh, he spent two years touring Morocco and recording Moroccan music. First impression, I'm very surprised. I was really interested about everything. I was quite exhilarated to have this opportunity to actually learn more about Tangier's uh, history. Among the founders of the American Legation Museum is the um, uh, McBay family, uh, James McBay and his wife, Margaret McBay. And he left a huge legacy of art and artwork. Um, for example, here we have the Tangier Mona Lisa or the Mona Lisa of Tangier or Zohra Lisa. Uh, these are paintings by Hassan Glawi. He's the son of Bashal Glawi and um, his art depicts a lot of, of uh, aspects of Moroccan life like the royal uh, proceedings, you can see uh, uh, Tborida and, uh, and other aspects of, of like the presence of his city, Marrakesh, is very well clear. The legation is lovely, it's beautiful. Mm. And we have a specific interest because we're here to research a forthcoming piece about the beat poets and their influence on the culture of Morocco and also America. The US legation in Tangier is a place where a fragment of American Moroccan history is kept alive. It's a storehouse of the tangible links to our past. Those antique items are in fact monuments that impart knowledge about how the world used to be and how it developed over the centuries.